So hello, um, I'm so delighted to share this short uh, debate between myself and Julie Lyons and I'm so honoured to be um, here with Linda Tucker as well who as you'll know is CEO and founder of the Global White Lion Protection Trust and um, today we're going to have a little bit of a debate and we open the doors and want you to all get involved and share your views and thoughts um, on the very um, important topic that sometimes gets ignored I think and needs to be shared around um, wild animal uh, particularly cub uh, petting um, and being involved having photographs taken that sort of thing so so we really want to just have a little bit of a chat about that and then invite you all to get involved and to share your thoughts and feelings so so I'd love to open things by allowing Linda hi Linda to um, to just start things off and sort of share with us, if you will, some of your views um, and beliefs about this topic. Well, hello, Julie. Um, I'm, I'm speaking to you from the heart of White Lion Territories. This is um, this is our office, um, but beyond beyond the fringes of the view that you see, um, our white lions are roaming free in the in the wilderness of the Greater Timbervati region, and that's. That's how it should be. That is the, really, that is the right of wild animals in our time. And it's, it's tragic that so few of the species alive today are, are performing their role in the ecosystem as yeah. was intended by the complex uh, interrelatedness of nature. So that's, yeah. that's part of the debate we're going to have in is should humans be handling wild animals? Is it in the interests of the animals? Yes. And so, so your view on that, Julie? Well, it's it's interesting because, of course, we we discovered we had a, a mutual passion, if you like, for this topic because of my recent trip over to China, where I spent um, three weeks alongside the giant pandas um, at the at the breeding and research centre over in Chengdu, and uh, it was quite a hot topic over there, and I. I went uh, to experience for myself what was happening energetically for the pandas uh, as a primary goal for me to sort of be with them and understand what was happening, but also to learn as much as I could about some of the, the biggest challenges over there. And I, for me, what struck me was that there is a genuine love and passion in people to want to be close to these incredible beings which is which is natural and does come from the heart but it contradicts with the really important message that says you know we don't own these animals they're not our possessions uh, and and certainly with the pandas because of their appearance they're so beautiful and they're so cuddly and cute there's this real misplaced sense of almost wanting to treat them like toys like um, plush toys um, and so for me it's about sort of stepping back and changing perspective and thinking about you know whilst I might like to be close to this glorious little being is that the right thing for, for for that being and for the for indeed for the survival in this instance with the giant pandas of, of the species because the human imprinting and the beliefs that are shared in doing that in showing the world as it was when we were out there with the world media that it's okay to handle and cuddle wild animals really doesn't match it didn't it just felt very incongruent for me to see people thinking that that was okay um, so whilst in my heart I would love to have cuddled a, a little cub I knew that it wasn't the right message to send out so so it's almost to say to people that that do have that desire it's not that they're a bad person it's just that we need to extract ourselves from that I would like and, and I'm I would like to have my photo taken to see a bigger view and send that message out to as many others so that's really sort of where I'm I'm coming from on it. And I know we talked a little bit about how you needed to share that message widely as well for the White Lions too. That's very well expressed, Julie. I think there's so many people today who are yearning for the affect, unconditional love that they get from animals, yeah. that they, they kind of are prepared to pay for it. And in that process are completely unaware aware that they are damaging the rights and the future of those animals because yes. white 
wild animals and particularly predators are human printed, which means they are dependent on humans in some way or they've lost the natural of humans. Yes. Those animals are then regarded as dangerous animals by natural conservation officials. Yes. And if they show any natural um, what looks like dangerous type behavior, like coming too close to humans, mm -hmm. they can be shot consequence. Yes. So, you know, if well-meaning public go and, and cuddle um, these, these baby predators, mm. um, tiger or lion cubs, they, they are completely unaware that in doing so, they are risking the lives and the future of those animals who will then be regarded as dangerous animals. Yes. And, and I think if we knew that, we would understand the risks and the damage that we cause. And it, it, it comes down to, to you know, the feeling of love that we have for nature. And what is love? I mean, love isn't possession and paying to get photographed with, with uh, a creature that you love mm. and therefore damaging their chances. Mm. Love is, is truly allowing the nature of the animal or the person that you love to be free. Yes. If you truly love someone, you don't contain them, chain them, and endanger their lives. Yes. You allow them to express their true nature. And it's the same quality we have to allow in the, in wildlife. We have to allow the nature and the freedom of these incredible creatures to express themselves as nature intends it. Yes. Because all these creatures have an incredibly important interrelated role to play in the wild. Yes. And if once we not only contain them in captivity, but much more than that, once we commoditize them, we put a price on their heads, we pay to photograph them, we are reducing them to commodities, and actually that's the worst thing we can do for them, yes. tragically. Yes, yeah. And it is, it's that contradiction that that is often difficult for people to grasp uh, who may not have spent the time uh, immersed in the issues that that you and I have been uh, been immersed in and and are unsure and to look at it it does look harmless enough doesn't it I know some of the people that I was out in China with uh, who were also with me working with me were saying well these animals are already captive born so does it really make a difference um, and, and so there's always a reason why you can almost like explain away, oh, well, it's only me and it's only one one particular being. Um, but but my response to that was, but think about the message that that's sending out, you know, to all the people that may just see that in a short film or, a you know, a newspaper article. It's OK to do this. And as you say, there are so many different um uh, different aspects and angles to consider that uh, that just a little bit of mindfulness and a, and a bit of I think you're talking of honoring the animals and, and respecting their unique divinity their unique place on the planet uh, and you wouldn't think of you know going up to another human and, and you know sitting them on your knee and cuddling them to show that you honored and revered them you know unless they may be a small child that uh, that you happen to know and had a relationship with which is completely different but uh, but yeah I think it's a it's a, a case of re-evaluating our perspective on how we treat and engage with all of the beings on the planet. Absolutely. And in the case of lion cubs in South Africa, this situation has reached crisis point. Um, you know, if we remind ourselves in the 70s, there was a very famous story, which was Elsa, the lioness that came in from the wild. It was called Born Free. Mm. Everyone knew the story and how the Adamsons grew, you know, how this lioness grew up with the Adamsons as a member of the family and then went back into the wild. She was a, an incredible lioness who could cross from her species into the human species and get a message to the human species, to the world, yes. that lions love, that they are pure love. Yes. Now, that educated humans worldwide who got the message that lions actually are capable of incredible loving yes. and affectionate behavior yes. so she did an, she did an incredible thing for her species for the human species and for nature in general however as a consequence of that 
human, uh, certain humans recognize that this, that the love of nature is a commodity to make money out of. And this then became a whole cynical, exploitative and brutal industry where in South Africa, lion cubs are treated as commodities, are, are hired out for for money so that people can hug them. And then those very same cubs are shot as trophies. Yeah. So, you know, this is the consequence of what some humans did with a message from nature. You know, mm-hmm. nature expressed love and then some humans decided, well, let's exploit that for money. Yes. It's a terrible thing that yeah. is going on. And we as, res- as a responsible public need to be very, very aware of the situation and not be part of an, of an industry, you know, actually supporting an industry that is killing wildlife yes. for money. Yes. And, you know, we need to say that very clearly. Um, there are, there are visitors coming to South Africa. There are students coming to South Africa to cub petting programs, mm. believing the the um, falsehood that's been put out there by these projects that these cubs that are being handled are going to go back into the wild. Mm. That is completely untrue. Those cubs that are being handled are going to be shot as trophies in a couple of years. Yeah. It's, it is an industry that is called canned lion hunting. Mm-hmm. Lions in a can. They never get to see the freedom. And by hugging them, you, you are prejudicing I mean, you, you basically ensuring that their future is a hunter's bullet. Yes. So that's how bad it's become. That what you've described as, you know, um, as as kind of commoditizing of wildlife has reached crisis point in South Africa. It's so bad now that that lions in captivity, who were once, you know, their their their, their parents were once stolen from the wild for the purpose of breeding in captivity ah. now now two or three generations have been bred in captivity and it is recognized by this industry that cubs are crowd pullers yeah. so they keep producing cubs if they have too many they simply i mean literally put them to death because uh, they have too many wow. or uh, the the parents are are once they're unmanageable are put into cages and eventually shot Yes. as trophy animals. Do we really want to be part of this process? Oh. Those of us who have a heart, it, yeah. it's, a, it's shocking to think that, that we as the public are actually supporting a, a cynical killing industry. Yes, and it's through ignorance and misunderstanding, isn't it? And of course, the people that are doing that uh, don't want that truth to, to be seen and and understood. So I think you're message is absolutely crucial at this time and certainly I know we'll do our best to spread the inf- the truth about this as far as we can. In terms of what um, things that people can do, people listening in watching this video, what, what words of advice would you give to people in terms of how they can help to spread the word on this? Well simply, and it's a challenge for people, the, the critical thing is to support organizations that are in the survival of species in their natural habitat. Yes. Because to keep species in cages, in zoos, or these breeding camps is like keeping children uh, in, in slavery. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. So that do not, in, as, as the public, I'm appealing to you from the heart, from my heart to your, do not support any place that keeps animals in captivity, and if they tell you they're going to be releasing those animals, and recognize that that's that is a trick. That yes. is simply to to exploit gu- gullible public yeah. to giving them more money. Yes. So make sure that your donations go to organisations that are genuinely committed and can prove that they have, or that, that they are protecting not only the species but the species. In their natural habitat, mm. we need to remember that species are intimately connected to their environment, yes. and then it's, it's it's a rich and complex ecosystem that has to be protected if we, as the human species, are going to survive. 
survive into the future. Yes. So that one single rule of yes. supporting two concepts will change will change this exposure to the industry. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's a really important point in terms of support. Um, when I went out to China, I had a few a few concerned people saying, "Why are you supporting the captive breeding?" Of pandas, uh, and I and I again, it's a difficult line to walk because for me, I wanted to have the uh, ability to experience and connect with the pandas, knowing that my desire for them was to be free. But knowing the captive pandas that are at the base, they they will never be free. And the reality is, with the the results of the latest census that they're waiting for in China of the giant panda population, is that their numbers are going to have uh, so massively declined because their habitat is literally almost non-existent now. The fragmentation is so extensive that there isn't there isn't even the place for them to release them safely at the moment. Um, and it becomes so complicated, as it often does with, with when humans get involved in, in their, their commercial and materialistic needs and, and the need to, or the greed to want the money from it. Uh, it's so difficult to, to see the future for the giant panda and so many other species around the world as well. Um, so it is a really fine line in terms of how you discern where you put your energy and your effort. I totally agree with it. And it is quite a minefield, isn't it, to discern the truth of what's happening? Because um, I found it so contradictory uh, when I was out there. Without, pe without question, the people with the pandas there love and care for the pandas uh, with their whole heart, you know. But the, the situation there is is incredibly complicated and... Uh, I certainly didn't come away with any answers, but just held in my heart that I hope that the people in in the uh, in the areas and and the governments out there will do something in time to start to claim back the land and try to re-establish the migration corridors. But uh, who knows what's going to happen? Well, Judy, what we do know is the times we live in. Um, are very interesting and mm. the public each individual in the public needs to realize how powerful we are yeah. in, in affecting change we, yes. we don't need to rely on our so-called authorities mm. because we've seen on, on you know on the global stage that the populace can topple governments that the populace um, that 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 popular opinion can change everything. The, yes. the so-called consumer is king now. Yes. So each and every one of us hearing this message needs to recognize that we can substantially change the current circumstances. Yes. That's what animals require of us at this time. So, so one single member of the public uh, refusing to go to one of these canned killing camps will get the message to yes. that camp that what they are doing is unacceptable. Yes. If there's more than one, the pressure is all the more powerful. Yes. So that's all we need to do is for each of us to recognize that we are, are when we are inspired by heartfelt emotion in protecting our environment, we are a very powerful force, each yes. and every one of us. Yes, and I think it is about the individual, but also then a community of like-minded people that are able to stand up for what they believe to be right uh, in a positive way that says this is what we want uh, and this is how we believe we need to act and behave in order to allow that to, to happen and manifest. And I think that's really, really key, certainly with the Awakening to Animals conference. That's all about positive guided action about saying what we can do as, as you rightly um, point out you know how can we as individuals and then a collective peacefully but powerfully stand up for the truth that we feel in our hearts and and together that you know there is really no limit to how we can change things absolutely that that is the key as individuals and uh, as as a community of like-minded individuals, mm -hmm. that is our our route to changing everything. And 
we we if we pause, we will recognize just how powerful that is. Yes. Yes, nice Julie. I, um, <laughs> I'd just like to put on record. You, you, you might. I think that's a great way to finish. But I, yeah. I, I would like to put on record in case you can include this, or in case it's relevant. Mm. Um, when, when I started, I've been, I've been doing the conservation work for the white lions for more than two decades now. Mm. First of all, gathering the knowledge around the lions, which was not only scientific knowledge, but mm. also indigenous knowledge systems around the sacredness of these animals and their ancestral lands. Mm. The, the, the sacredness of the lions and their lands was integrally related. It's a mm. long story, but it's no doubt the case for all species yes. that you cannot extract them from their environment. It is all intrinsically related. Yes. But what, what I just wanted to put on record is that um, ten years after my researching this, I finally discovered uh, a, a lioness um, regarded as the most sacred lioness on the African continent mm. who had to be returned to the wild. Mm -hmm. However, I found her in the most dismal situation. She was in a killing camp, one of these canned hunting camps that was just starting up at that time. This was yeah. the year 2000. Mm. I found her, she was born on Christmas Day in a place called Bethlehem in the year 2000. And it, this place uh, in Bethlehem, South Africa, was one of these early captive breeding and killing camps. And yes. she was born the snow white lion cub in the middle of um, dozens and dozens of golden lions who, who had been bred for the purposes of killing. Oh. And my task was to, to rescue her and return her to the wild. Oh. So I, I first encountered her days after her birth, and she'd already been removed from her mother, and um, by for she'd been forcibly removed from her mother, oh. this little baby lion cub. And so there, there are pictures of me holding her day really a day or two after her birth yes and then the next four and five years was a battle to get her to freedom and we had every authority in our country and internationally ah. because the understanding was that a, a lion cub that had been captive bred could not go back into the wild yeah. truly it took five years every day of five years to to challenge the authorities and finally release her and prove that she she could do it. Yeah. And she started hunting at the age of, actually it was six years finally when we opened the gates and she released into the wild of her habitat mm -hmm. and had to start hunting for herself and her cubs at that stage. Mm -hmm. But my point is that there are photographs out there of me actually handling her yes. and then um, – you know, at the age of two days old and then at the age of seven months old when I freed her mm -hmm. from this killing camp in secret and we went running in the wild. Yes. And then there are no more photographs of me handling her because it was clear to me that I I had to give her her freedom and not yes. handle her Yes. Uh, and, and risk her freedom. So my experience was of a mother who so wanted to contain and hold on to a loved one. Yes. But that true love is freedom. Yes. And so I had to overcome that that possessiveness that any mother feels. Yes. And and truly honor the love bond, which is recognizing the freedom yes. of the person or the animal who one loves so much. Yes. And so I just want to go on record with that, that those photographs of me handling a lion cub were taken specific context at the beginning of this captive breeding industry yes. uh, 15 years ago, yes. or 14 years ago today, and um, that I would no longer uh, do that because I'm fully conscious of the, of the consequences. Yes. The only, only circumstances in which I would, you know, handle a lion cub is if um, in a rescue situation mm -hmm. um, or, or if – for specific purposes, and here I'm going on record as well, yes. or if for specific purposes that cub needs to 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 act in a in in a in a 
awareness raising campaign about yes. the captive breeding industry. So that that lion cub might act um, to raise awareness about this this shocking commoditizing industry that we're living in yes. in, in our times. Yes, I understand. So I've you know I've just included that in our in our in our discussion. You might or might not include it, but I just thought it was important to go on record because there are some photographs of me circulating out there. Yes. But the context is totally different. Yes, absolutely. I, I paid didn't pay the the killing industry to hug that cub. Mm -hmm. I hugged cub because though in those days it was unclear what was going on and I and in that moment I realized she needed to get to freedom and this whole situation needed to be exposed. Yes. Yes. No, and thank you for sharing that. And I think it's a really important point um, because, uh, again, you you've gone through a massive learning experience for yourself as you've as you've you know embarked on this huge journey that you've taken. And unfortunately, um, sometimes people will try and manipulate what you do to suit their own ends. And I think you voicing that beautifully and clearly makes perfect sense. And, you know, anybody that has seen those photographs or does see them in the future with that explanation, it makes perfect sense. And, um, and also the honesty that you have about the way that you love the animals and, and your heart, you know, was going out to her in her situation is, is, is beautiful. But your dawning realisation that she has to be free is something that's so universal on, on the planet at the moment in terms of, you know, you can go to all corners of the earth and see the similar types of scenario taking place where either their habitat's being destroyed uh, or you know they're being actually forcibly removed and killed uh, to captive animals to animals that are being uh, hunted in in that canned industry which is horrendous it's all over the place so um, so it really is about growing awareness being honest and being truthful to all that you see and, and to explain and raise awareness wherever you are whoever you are you don't have to be Linda Tucker who's you know walked for 20 years this amazing journey but whoever you are to step step up and and voice that in a peaceful and loving way is really really important so we recommend uh, as much sharing of this as possible 